Hi, BookTube. It's time for another literary update. Um, so we have, there is a readathon coming up starting tomorrow, since tomorrow will be June 1st. Um, and it's one of those readathons that will last a, the whole month, which is good. Um, the Myth Take Readathon. And I know two of the hosts, um, Jean from Jean's Book of Thoughts. And um, Ashley from a, a frolic through fiction. Uh, that I mean, I love her name and everything, but that's a tongue twister kind of name because I can never. I always get my F's and THs mixed up because they sound similar, at least in my head. Um, like I used to pronounce Thursday, fur day, or actually, I think I was more prone to get Friday mixed up with um. It would sound like a th word. But anyway, um, so it's a, it's actually a really cool and very immersive readathon. It's um, basically you are you have four different types of characters that are come from myth and legend. You have the rogue, the warrior, um, the royal court, the sorcerer. Um, I think that. The rogue, the royal court, the sorcerer, and the warrior. I think I said them all. Um, and then amongst those, there are different versions of those. And of course, um, I would, and this is a real, and you basically create a character using, by going down a path of the types of books you read. And then some, and then at one point, um, when you get to the, you have to read four books all together for just to go straight down one path. And you can, at, on the third prompt, you can deviate to the, the, um, care the opposing, the character that goes with that, the opposing character that goes with that. And you, there's all these things you can do to, like, they have readings, 24 hour readathons, and you can update and let people know. And I would, um, and it's just, it's a really cool readathon. And there are people that will go all out and, like, dress up like the character that they've created, you know, with makeup and stuff. They'll draw it. Now, if, and this is a readathon that I keep thinking about doing. Because at first, when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, that's sounds kind of cool, but I wasn't really interested in it. But then all of a sudden, I watched um, Ashley's video um, on her TBR, I started to watch that, and actually, and I saw another person's TBR, another booktuber, um, so, Sophie Reads, I think her channel's called, um, Sophie Vlog, or maybe it's Sophie Vlogs, but I was watching her, and she was sharing her TBR for it, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna check this out, and here's my problem. So I really, it really is exciting. I kind of want to really do it. But then I have so many, as you saw from my summer team yard, there are so many types of books that I want to read. And like there's some that I want to read like now. And those, some of those books, quite a few of those books will take me a long time to read. So I'm just feeling very like part of me is a little overwhelmed. But then a part of me is thinking, oh, but this seems like such a fun TBR, a uh, fun like readathon. And so I don't know what to do. I don't know if I want to do it or not. And if I do, I need to declare my TBR. Um, I probably need to film my TBR for it. Either this evening, and it won't go up until tomorrow or tonight. Or I will do it. Or I will do it after I get home tomorrow. Because you're supposed to declare your TBR. No, granted, maybe I can declare it on, like, I should check and see if I could declare it on Instagram. I might be able to declare my TBR on Instagram if I if I did decide to do it. But like I said, I am so conflicted. I'm so indecisive because there's so many books I want to read. And then there's all these books that, and then there, like, there are books that I want to read that will apply to other prompts that aren't necessarily, they're, they only, they apply to certain paths. And, you know, I can't deviate from my path too much, or I can, but, like, like the my first option for, like, it was either, it's either a, the path, well, obviously, I want to I be a sorcerer, which is, as Ashley said, is probably the most popular one. So, I want to go the sorcerer's path, sorcerer's path, 
Um, and the choice is I either want to go down the path of witch or fairy. Um, and I have a prompt that could apply, and I do have books that could apply to those paths, but then there are other books that I want to check out. And then with, like, with the witch prompt, you can go to the, um, you, you can deviate from that path and go down the mercenary path instead. Um, and that's how I, I would end the readathon. And then with the fairy prompt, you can go down at the third prompt, you can go to the, um, during the fa the fairy path, you can at prompt number three, you can go to the bandit prompt. You can deviate to the bandit prompt inst bandit path instead. So I'm very like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And I mean, I do know there are some. I think there's some people that just like will read, you know, do the one path and then do another set of books. Or on a different path so it's very like I could do that but then I don't have the patience and I want to jump into the other books but you're supposed to read the four main books first and then you read if you want to deviate from your path you can read four main books from that path as well and like I say I have to declare my TBR soon like in the next couple days and I don't know what my TBR is I mean at least for the first two prompts for the sorcerer and the sorcerer path I do have books for that and if I decide to do that let me find them in my amongst my pile here because I have these kind of what I did is I organized my books by you know the books that I think I get through really fast and then the books that and then all the books in between all the way up to the books that I know will take me a long time for I like a year to read a year or longer to read so I need to at least like read at least 100 to 200 pages of those books like, I just want to make a big, read a big chunk of those books. Um, actually, I know one of them is, be right back. Um. do that no don't do that I like I did not give myself any faith to this week but um the first for the sorcerers the sorcerers path the first one for all of the the first one for the um the witch path is read a book with an animal on the cover so I chose it was either or featuring an animal, not an animal on the cover, but featuring an animal. And it was either between this one, the one I'm about to show you, or this one, Assassin's Quest, because it does have a wolf in it as a main character, as one of the main characters. But I don't know how much the wolf is involved in the story. But this is when the situation where it's a bug that I need to read that I've delayed it long enough. But like I said, I don't know if the wolf features heavily in the story or not. I mean, I guess it probably does. If you know this, if you have read this book, then you, you can, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, but it was either between reading a book in a series that I need to get, I need to read the last book in the trilogy, or it was read a, start a new one that I has been sitting there for a while. And I just want to get read the first book. It's a it's a volume. It's two. It's a two volume. Um. So it's not technically a series. It's two books. So it's kind of a duology, actually. So I could have applied it to. I probably could have applied it to the um, the medievalathon that was back in May. But I um, it would take me too long to read it. I would never get it done unless I had already started. Um. But that was this Legends of the Dragon Realm. And this is, there are three, this is a one volume with three stories in it, and I'm reading, I um, already went ahead, either way I'm reading this book, because I already got to, um, I'm already reading the Fire Drake, which is the first, the first novella in this story, in this collection, so I think I'm concerned novellas, which is about this boy named Cabe, and he is descendant of 
the Zawar, I guess, the, a warrior, a famous warrior who defeated these dragons, because in this one the dragons are bad guys. It's one of these things, I bought this book because I was looking for more adult dragon stories, not just middle grade dragon stories where the dragons are cute and fun, um, but some darker dragon stories as well. Like, I love Naomi, although that one's not super dark, but I love Naomi Novak, the Temeraire series, and then I wanted to get, um, I have Tooth and Claw on my Amazon wish list. But he is basically caught where people are his, all these people are after him, all the, the dragon kings of this realm um, are all hunting Cade down. And he has the powerful, the one, this powerful evil sword that could be a threat, but it's the only thing that has been able to help him defeat, protect himself. Um, his dad is an evil bastard and is trying to kill and wants to kill him. Um, and he's receiving help from his grandfather's lover, the Lady Gwen. He has brought her back because she was in prison in a magical coma. <laughs> and he has woken her up and she and him, along with this, this demonic entity called Dark Horse, are essentially seen as a demon. Um, Dark Horse, they are going to the Griffin, who is the current ruler of the lands. And meanwhile, his father is sending off his, um, his little minions, his minions, the, um, the, what are they called? His minions, the, what are those ones called? The, these minions, avians, avions, these bird-like creatures, that used to rule the land before, but then somehow what ended up happening is they all of a sudden became seekers. That's what they're called, seekers. They became, that they're seeking something. And so, um, his dad, at, um, Azar, I can't remember his name, um, is taken, is trying to send, has them under his control right now, although they, they could easily turn against them if he was if he's not careful, and send them to track down Kane. So talk about daddy issues. Family, family drama. So this first one, and I'm guessing in the second story, Ice Dragon is going to be about the aftermath of what happens at the end, going by this description on the back, going to be the aftermath of, which actually, in a way, by reading, I shouldn't have read this, because now I spoil myself, because I know it's going to, you know, in a, in a way, I mean, not the, it doesn't give you a play by play about what happens, but it basically implies that things are going to work out, that's all I'm going to say. And then, um... And then I get, and then of course, so it's going to be a series, it's like a series that one bleeds into the other kind of thing, like, one's, it's going to be a traditional series, it sounds like, where, like, each book goes into the other, like, it doesn't, because I feel like you have two types of series, you either have the traditional series that we all read, you know, where each book comes into, goes into the other, and it's not, you know, I mean, the first book might have an ending, but then... And the other books will too, but then you know that they are basically continuing into the next, into the next novel. It's not like the story ends all of a sudden, like, it's not like a new adventure begins. And there's, although, I guess there's actually the really three types of series, now that I think about it. Um, there's the ones where, like, it's like the second, the next book picks up right where the previous book left off, and then there's those series where it's like, they start out as... You could read, well, you could potentially read each one as a standalone, but they're kind of part of each other. They have a linking, and then there's the companion series where, like, it's about a different character in each book, so it's a different story and different characters, a different story in each book, but there's, a, like, a small connection, if that makes any sense. Um, but, yeah, so this one seems to be one of the traditional series where, each story goes, is one right after the other. There's no, like, they're not, maybe you couldn't, you wouldn't necessarily want to read them, them by themselves as individual stories. And I'm really liking it so far, of what I've read. It's very interesting. It's a very 
old fashioned writing style, not like old, like as in the like those um the classics, like they're gonna, you know, but like Lord of the Rings. It's modern, but it feels like a fairy tale. Like with the writing and stuff. So I'm probably gonna just read Fire Drake first, and then maybe I'll read Ice Dragon in July, and then read in August. I will read, which is kind of funny because it's summer, so I'll be reading that, Ice Dragon. Um, and then Wolf Helm will be read, um, I will read that one in August. I think that's what I'll do. But so I'm kind of, so I'm, like, either way I'm going to read this one. Um, and then the other book that... The other thing that applies um, is the prompt that applies to all of them. That the, the second prompt, there's a second prompt that applies to everything that everybody has to read that prompt. And um, in our, in the case of the sorcerer, the sorcerer path, the prompt is read a foil book. And if I'm understanding it correctly, then this hopefully applies to that prompt. But, um,. The Night Country by Melissa Albert is a, it's the sequel to the um, to the Hazelwood, and this might be one of those series where it's like you don't necessarily like you could um, the the first one the Hazelwood had an ending to it, but it leaves it on it leaves it in a way that you can continue the story, and obviously she did. I don't know how many more books she's going to write, though. I'll have to look it up and see if there's if it's just going to be a trilogy or if it's going to be a series. Um, or maybe it's just a duology. But I don't know what's going to happen in this book. Um, but I think I heard that the boy that our main character, Alice, makes friends with in the first book, I think he's coming back in this one. Um, and I think, so I think this is what they mean by foil, this kind of stuff. I think this is what's considered foil. Or, like, I know a lot of books have, like, they're hard, they're naked hardbacks, but they have, like, writing, like, writing on it or something. So, I think this applies. I think this is foiled. And I have no way, because I looked up foil, but it did not help. Um, I looked up foiled covers... I mean, I might try it again just to double check, but yeah, I figured if I decide to do the Myth Take Readathon, then this could apply for that. But I'm probably gonna, when I upload this video, I'm probably gonna include in the title, Potential Myth Myth Take Literary Update, potentially going to do the Myth Take Readathon. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do for the next prompts because I do have a like one of the prompts for um for the um one of the prompts for the if I chose the Fey path, which I thought about doing that too, so I can do this is you pick a book that is for a woodland theme or something. And I had just bought finally bought a new copy of this one. So this could also apply to the occult theme as well. This, this could potentially do the... But if I deviate from the path and go to the mer the mercenary path, which is the one that goes with the witch path, um, you can you can switch the mercenary path. Because, like, the royal court has hired you as a... Mer might want to hire you as a mercenary. So then it, I don't know if, it would, if I can use that for any of those prompts if I did if I did that. But this applies to the... If I went the fey path, I could do this for the sec for the third prompt, but again, that's another situation where I could also deviate and go on the bandit path as well. So I don't know, but this mo this is if you guys don't know, this is an Naomi Novak standalone. One of her standalones, her fair it's a fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Um, as you, I did in one of my previous videos, I did talk about. I don't care. I would read any. Beauty and the Beast retelling. I know people think it's overdone, but I would still read them. Um, but this one is about a girl named Askanishka. And she lives in this village that is being haunted, being like 
threatened by this magical forest. It's like a, this very sickly, think like Mirkwood. That's why it makes me think of Mirkwood. And they are only protected from the forest by this sorcerer, our wizard, who calls himself, who is, they call the dragon. He lives in this tower on the outskirts of the village, close to the, close to the forest, and his magic protects it, but he is like, I'll protect you guys, but every ten years you must send one of your girls to train with me and become my apprentice. And the problem is, whenever, in their concern, they're, they're a little reluctant to this because they don't trust the dragon, and they are work, and they know that whenever someone becomes his apprentice, they end up never coming back to the village. And Ashkanishka thinks that her best friend, Cassia, Cassia, because, will be chosen because she's beautiful. Um, I'm trying to look. It's beautiful, graceful, and brave. I'm going by what it says in the back. But, surprise, surprise, so you can guess who that he does not pick her. He picks Ashkanishka. And I don't know if I'm saying I have to listen to um someone else's interview, but I remember really loving this. Although the romance was a little I was kind of surprised by it. I mean it wasn't a like I mean I knew it was being the beast retelling, but I, I mean I think I did. I don't remember, but I was a little like I feel like her romances are not they're like kind of unexpected a little bit when there's romance in there. Which funny because some people say I remember reading a comment a long time ago where they said oh a, fan a woman can't write dark gritty epic fantasy she can only write rom silly paranormal romances with magic in them and blah 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 it's been so long but I just remember that comment it's, it's kind of stay with me because it really annoyed me that that's what they say when it's like hello Robin Hobb and Elliot Brooks actually did a video about that so I want an excuse to read this book now that I finally have a copy of it because I was really loving it and I got it from the library. That was and that was actually before I started worrying about how long books will take me to read before I return them. So I want to read this one, but I don't know how I can make it apply to the the witch path prompt with the witch path. And then I know there's a couple of them that involve like battles, like a magical battle prompts and on the path. So there's a few books I have here that I could apply to that as well. Um that I do need to read. But I mean the pro like I said, my problem is that there are so many books I want to read, but they don't apply to all the prompts. So I wanna do this, but then at the same time it's like but there's like so many books I want to read right now, and I can't decide, and I, I feel like, and I'm someone, and I always feel guilty, until I really get into a book, I have to get so into the book that I'm not, I don't, I'm like, oh, I want to keep reading this book. I keep thinking about, like, all the other books that I haven't read yet that I want to read. And, um, and I am also, as you saw from the thumbnail, if it becomes a thumbnail, because for some reason I can't get the right the thumbnails that I want to show up. Um, as you saw from that, I'm reading these two books as well, which is David Copperfield by Dickens and Carnival for the Dead by David Hewson. Hewson. And I don't think any of these really apply to any of the prompts. Um, So, I know that David Copperfield, now, if I went the warrior path, I think I could apply this to the warrior, or, not, actually, no, not the warrior, um, one of, one of, the, one of the ones that I read about, you're supposed to read a dark book as the second prompt. I don't know which one it was, but I am, I'm, like, not patient, because I keep thinking, oh, I want to read this one, I want to jump in this one, and I cannot decide. That's there, and lies the problem. So, anyway, but, um... And with this one, I'm doing that thing where I'm looking at people's reviews. I mean, I'm still kind of, in, I'm still interested in it, but I'm also hesitant. Like, I almost want a reason to no longer be interested. Um, because it's, I always, I don't like having to, I feel guilty that, because there's so many books that I have that I've started that I put aside and unhold for other books. And I don't want to do that again. 
and so I and I don't think I can really apply this to the myth the myth take readathon. Um, um, so definitely want to read some of the, I'm after I film this before I go for my run because I'm thinking about going for my run soon. Although I guess I can wait until four to go for my run, but um, seriously, no, it's not raining. Finally, the rain is not happening. Thank God. Although there was a moment when I was sitting outside reading, well, reading, I didn't think for a second that oh crap, it's gonna rain. Um, it might rain after all, but so far it hasn't. It's pretty sunny, and it feels and it doesn't feel too hot out. I don't know how many degrees it is. It is. And also, I downloaded another song onto my eye, my eye touch, which I'm very happy about because I still had, a, I still have a little bit of money on on the account, and I'm the only one who uses it, so I don't have to worry about anyone else. I'm the only one who wastes the money on there, so I had a little bit of money. So I got some songs from Frozen that I've been listening to constantly, and I've also, I'm the type of person who would like take a song from a musical or a movie, and like a movie musical and apply it to another character story somehow. Like I will think of it in my head. So with the songs from Rosen, I imagine other characters like, you know, some of my favorite characters like for instance, um, some of the characters for us book people, I um, you know, like the Grisha characters, for instance. Um like for some reason I kept picturing like I was listening I kept picturing Zoya like she's not as nice as Elsa she's not as sweet as Elsa but I feel like she is I could see her having a similar situation especially going with what happens with her character arc in King of Scars like I don't know I mean that's how my like I always try to apply these songs from for all these other characters like see how they fit even if it's stretching it a little bit and then, so I downloaded this one song that is kind of a more indie song. Like, not a lot of people probably know it. It's more of a cult fault. It's probably, I think she's, um, he or she, I think it's a woman. Yeah, it's a woman. Um, she is someone who has, like, a cult following. has, like, very, um, Celtic-type songs and mythology. So it actually fits the, it actually fits this like, if I wanted to have a background music for the, while well, I'm reading, it would fit the mood of, it would fit the readathon, now that I think about it. But, um, it's called We're, We're All Mad Here, and it's inspired by Alice in Wonderland. The, the artist, her name is S.J. Tucker, and she does a lot of those songs that, you, you know, those that are kind of inspired by mythology and fantasy and stuff like that. Like, I've, th I think there'll be three of her songs that I have on there now. Um... There's that one, then there's, I think there's, there's two more of her songs that I have on there. Oh, Firebird's Child, um, and then there's one more, I can't think, I think it's a, the slower one, but anyway, but yeah, I was, so I'm very excited to go for my run and have that song playing while I go running. Cause for some reason, I like I like to think about I like imagine like scenes like from a movie or a book in my head with those songs. But um anyway, so yeah, these technically I don't know how these would apply to the prompts, so I feel like I would have to put them aside, and I don't like doing that. But I'm hesitant to do that. And then I also for some reason I have this because I got this new edition of Jane Eyre. I finally got my new copy of Jane Eyre. Now I'm very tempted to read Jane Eyre now. But it doesn't really apply to the, you know. Although I've done pretty well this year. I've read more, like, quite a few books. That a lot of books within. And I think that's because I don't, I, I'm slowly prior learning to prior as much, like, I'm slowly prioritizing reading as the my main, like, where I read, where I just read, like, I mean, I still watch TV, I still go on the internet and walk, get lost in booktube videos or YouTube videos. But let's face it, I mostly watch booktube videos now. Um, unless, of course, like, there is a, like, a movie or something that just came out. I want to watch the interviews or the actors or something. Or a movie I'm just starting to get into, like, watch on a regular basis. But, um, and actually there's, a, um, there's an interview, a lot that is today, that is going on now. 
where that is hosted by Josh Gad, where he, the original Lord of the Rings cast, gets together, is gotten together and talk. Not the whole cast, but some of the cast members. Which I was tempted to look at, but it's a long, ongoing thing. And it's a whole, it's an interview, so it's a long, a long going live interview. So it's like, but anyway, um, but yeah, I want, I'm thinking about reading this one because like I got this nice, really nice edition because I love, I love these editions. They're, I think they're done by Sweet One or Press. So it's right there. And I'm trying to think what they're called. I always forget what they're. I never remember what the. Oh, they are by. Um, it's right there in the UK. And. Arc Arcturus Holdings Limited. I think that's the the publishing company. So um, I think it's connected to. To Sweetwater Press, I'm guessing, or maybe Sweetwater Press does the you know does the artwork helps with the artwork or something. But um, I, I, I love these editions. I love the artwork of the cover, and you know it's a good size too. And the print is, and like I said, the print is really great. So I'm tempted to read this, and it's one that I can fit in my lunchbox. So I could bring it with me to work. So I keep thinking about it. I want to do that one now too. And I am trying. I want to get. I definitely want to get Dame Copperfield done soon because that way I can, you know, either read the Pickwick Papers or Bleak House because I have the editions of those in this kind of edition of Bleak House and the, Pick the Pickwick Papers. So I'm very into getting into those right now. And then there's some of that I've just heard they have such great premises as well, like. Every time I watch Katie from Books and Things talk about like a Dickens or watch other booktubers talking about Dickens, I'm like, oh, I want to read it like right now. Um, like I said, I want to get David Copperfield done. You know, not that I want to rush David Copperfield, but like I want, I don't want to start another Dickens. I don't want to be reading two Dickens at the same time. I feel like he's an author who needs to take the time with. So I don't want to rush it, but then I keep thinking about all the other Dickens ones I want to read, especially like the two that are in that edition that I really like. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about Myth Take Readathon. Either way, I have to like I have to decide probably now if I'm gonna do it. But it's really hard because I can't make up my mind what but what path I want to take it with for and then, you know, it's and then there's all these other books I want to read, and um, sorry, got um, sorry, I got just heard my phone go off. So it's my bad because I messaged Sherry earlier. Although I guess now I don't have to if she's not, because it seems like she just got a new phone, and now I can no longer get messages via on my laptop. So that's both a good and a bad thing. Because it's like, on my, I should say Mac, not laptop. I have a Mac. Um, because then it won't interrupt me. I will only hear it from a distance from wherever my phone is. But then, uh, you know, at the same time, it's like, if I don't want to have to let my phone, if I don't want my phone to distract me, then, you know, although it seems like the messages come through, because she obviously responded to my message, I, I think, unless she just was like, are you getting my, unless it's going to be like the other day, where it looks like I didn't get the message. But, um, although in that case it was more like, I don't, you know, I'm, I do a lot of other stuff throughout my day, so it's not, so I don't spend my whole time, like, even though, yeah, I'm addicted to watching booktube videos and stuff, I do other stuff, like I eat meals, and, you know, or I would, you know, watch booktube, or read my books. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make the same mistake I used to make back in the days when I did roleplay, where I was on my computer all day, and only got up to go to the bathroom, or eat a meal or something, or my parents had errands to run, then I might go with them, or if they offered to take me to Books a Million. I don't want to make that mistake again, and be one of those people who just sits in front of me at the computer all day. I want to go do stuff. The problem with Ben, at that time though, I was friends with someone that is like, I had to let her, and I was, role, I had a role play partner that I was sort of friends with, that she was like, where did you go? Like, I had to let her know if I was going to leave the computer and not role play with her right now, if I was not going to respond to her, her role play comment. Which I am so glad I'm not friends with her anymore. 
That's all I gotta say. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling now. And I don't, I might make another video, like, tomorrow when I get home from work, tomorrow evening, or maybe, it might be better to wait until Tuesday the 2nd to do my, to, if I decide to do the Myth Take Rethon and declare my TBR then, if I'm gonna make a video for it. Um, like, make it official, because I kind of need to tell you about the books I'm thinking about that I might read if I decide to do it, so. So either because on Tuesday I am going to I may call and ask if I can go into work, but I'm I'm not. But they, I was like you know I don't like getting up super early to go to work. Although I had to admit, like I said, I'm again that's one of those things I have mixed feelings about because which I th although I might have already talked about this mentioned this before, but um I don't it's hard for me to get out of bed that early. So I'll probably have to get up at 7 because I won't be there at 8. Um, 8.30. But then it's like, you know, and the sooner I get there, because I'm a part-time employee, so my days are not that long, the sooner I get home. But it's hard to get up in the morning. And I'm not a morning person. I get cranky. And, you know, I, I need a cup of coffee just to deal with to be able to pretend that I'm not annoyed by people that are talking to me early in the morning or saying, you know. And, um, but I, um, so, but then the same, you know, so, like, I don't like getting up that early and it takes a while to get me out of there and I'm still tired. Especially because I just cannot go, I try to go to bed early, but then I get sidetracked all the time and and make an excuse of, oh, I just want to watch one more video. Or, I'm going to read a little bit before I go to bed. Which, reading a little bit before I go to bed is a little is better than staring at my computer screen. Because the, the light on your computer screen tricks you, tricks your mind into thinking that you're not tired yet. But, um, if you're reading a book, it kind of... Although, there have been a few times where I finished it, I'm so excited and so anxious. Like, what happened back when I read Finale... I finished it within a couple days, which doesn't happen that often, but it's one of those books where it I can get through really quickly. I could read a lot. I was eager to read a lot of chapters, and the chapters were not that long. Um, and I finished it before I went to bed, but then I couldn't fall asleep because I was kind of on a high of like, you know, I was so excited because I finished the book and you know all that, and so it's kind of I think that's what I credit to that I was just so excited and thinking about. The book and it wasn't like I was like it was still on the book was still on my mind I was on a bit of a high with the book and everything and, and so I couldn't fall asleep so that was one of the times where the reading did not help but anyway um so yeah I'm still I'll still be tired in the morning and a little cranky although for some although I feel like when I get to work though eventually I can get to a point where I have enough energy like because it's early morning so I, I just, I'm, I feel like I'm not, I'm not a morning person, but it's more, it's like, I just don't want to, you know, I want, you know, I need some time to have, I need my space in the morning. But when I go to work, first of all, I get home earlier if I go early, the earlier I go in. And then I'm not going to be mean and cranky around people. I'm going to pretend to be, you know, I'm going to be like, you know, all happy and stuff. And because I'm in a professional, I'm in a you know, when a customer, I'm a, you know, someone who provides a service to customers, so I'm not going to be mean and cranky to people. Um, I don't see any point in that. But, yeah, so I'm getting up, but on Tuesday, I was supposed to have them off, but then they called me and I was like, you know, I better not say no to this because I had, I took a week-long vacation, or a little bit more over a week vacation last week. And I only worked two times during that time. I was originally supposed to be off. So I figured, you know, I better I better say yes to that. So I did. So I'm working 8.30 on Tuesday to 1. So I get home at 1. So I mean, I want... So I might make... If I decide to do it, then I might wait until then to do the TBR. Unless I decide to do, like, maybe on Instagram, declare, declare my TBR then. Um, I don't know. So, but who knows what's going to happen. Okay, again, I'm going to stop talking now and stop rambling and just wish me luck on this decision. 
And if you guys like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up, click subscribe if you haven't already, click the bell notification below if you want to know when I post more videos, and um, feel free to share what you're currently reading right now, I'd love to hear about that, and I will talk to you all later. Bye!